Good morning guys, Chris at the Ultimate Recycler. It's nice and early, it's just before seven. The sun's just come up, beautiful fresh morning. And it's going to be a hot day. It's going to be, I think, well into the thirties Celsius. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, probably about 90, 95 or something. Now I'm filming this because I've got a van load of stuff I picked up yesterday. Uh, typical scenario, people rang me and said, we're cleaning up a shed. We're going to take it to the tip. My husband was going to burn all these boxes. Do you want any of them? So as soon as I said, we're going to take it to the tip, it's kind of my Achilles heel. It's like, oh no, I've got to try and save it if I can. And it turns out to be some pretty good stuff. So I thought I'd film this just to give you an idea of what we can save, what we can sell, where some value is. Uh, mostly boxes. They're old um, packing crates. I think they are fruit crates. There might be some oil boxes in there. Um, now, they're a little bit damaged, but they'll sell really well. I can't believe he was going to put them on the fire. Uh, this old rocker at the front here was apparently a restoration project from years ago. It used to be bright green, I think they said. Uh, it's a bit wonky, and they've put uh, modern Phillips head screws in there. But look, it's, yeah, it's a bit rough, but it's still very saleable. Uh, there's a towel rail and there is a box of old china up the front so not a lot of stuff but I thought I'd show you what I got what I've saved from the bonfire pile or from going to the tip and what sort of value we can get out of it so I'm going to unload it while it's nice and cool and before the sun comes up too high and uh, I'll give you a look and we'll go through and price some things and just see how it works out okay there's all the boxes there's actually 30 of them in all uh, there's no oil boxes. They're all fruit crates of some sort. Uh, there's a lot of them with uh, little splits and loose boards and very, very dirty spider webs, wasps' nests, straight out of the shed. And a few little bits of boards have been put back in them. So, look, what I'm going to do with these, normally I would take them out the back and wash them up uh, and repair some loose boards and just tidy them up a bit so they're nice and clean. And I would get $20 a box without any problems. But I'm so busy at the moment. I've got so many deals happening. I don't have time to muck around. I've stacked them all out the front here today. And I'm actually going to put a big sign and say $10 a box as is. Now, I allowed 50 for these without even really counting them up. And the people thought I was most generous. As I said, they were going to be firewood. And if I get $10 a box, there's 30 of them. There's $300 return. I don't expect they'll all sell because people will pick out the best ones, but what's left I can either knock apart and use the boards for other box repairs or perhaps fix them up. But the secret to dealing I think is just move stuff quickly uh, by having a good uh, bargain here that people like to see, I'll pick up a heap, someone might buy 10. You know, it, it's good quick turnover, it leaves my shop feeling a bit like a garage sale uh, where people can check in regularly and get bargains and the stock's always changing so i think that really helps um, with my business and uh, if i yeah look that's a really good margin and i'll probably put some money in an envelope to give back to these people and that's what i was going to do with this other stuff anyway let's look at what else we got there's an old high chair that i think folds down to a small chair and a table or something it looks like it's been partially restored, but then forgotten about. Um, I don't think it's broken at all. It might be missing some pieces. But look, there's there's thirty dollars, I reckon. Uh, the old towel rail. It is an old one, but it is a bit wonky. I'm not going to waste any time doing it up. I think we'll just probably put twenty dollars on that. And the rocker, as we talked about, look, I reckon I could nearly put fifty on that. Um, I can't see any breaks. It does need some new um, cane insert there and the screw should be replaced but look that's a good restorer for someone still so i'll probably go 50 on that i'll add up all the prices of his other stuff and i don't even know what's in this box um, there are some very old pieces of china that that large um, platter there is would be late victorian it'd be 1800s i don't know if it's got a crack or not but it looks pretty good there's some very dirty old china in here. I don't know what's in the bottom. The candelabra there is not quite that old. It's just a more modern silver plate one. That's uh, that's an invalid feeding cup. It's a large one too. I won't pull it out because I think the handle's jammed through something. But if that's undamaged, that will get probably $20. Uh, I'm not sure what this gruesome looking creature is. 
the uh, don't know at possibly souvenir wear from the 70s or something that'll still sell people there's actually a market for gruesome stuff it's amazing what people buy so i'll have to go through that box and wash it up i'll give you a better look when it's all clean and we'll price it out uh these other things that vase is a big modern one it's actually got a barcode on the bottom so that clock there is a very modern quartz movement it's only a cheapie but it's still saleable especially for someone that likes roosters uh, there's some fittings here from a Kenwood chef uh, kitchen appliance and that looks like an attachment for it so look I'll check eBay on those because I have sold Kenwood chef parts before on eBay and they've done very well there's a tin of old bullet casings they might just go in the brass and that steel peg is actually from the railways it's uh, what they call a dog spike and uh, I've seen them made uh, nice old bits of timber with these hammered in make really nice coat hooks you often see them like a coat rack you often see them being sold at markets i've also seen tubs of these sold in shops for one or two dollars each but um you know i don't see a lot of value in trying to do that it's really just scrap metal to me or at least we can make something out of it that's off a, a mixer a blender of some sort so We'll go through and do a list at the end of this video, see what it all adds up to, because it's quite amazing how things multiply out and you get a really good total. And that's the whole basis for my business. And buying in bulk is certainly one of the secrets, turning over quick and um, yeah, make a good living. And it's really fun going treasure hunting and have people call me and I get to save all this stuff from going to the tip. So it's a win-win for everyone. They get some cash, I make a living and um, people that are chasing this stuff are usually happy otherwise they wouldn't buy it so uh, all right we'll wash up the china i'll do a price for the boxes hopefully i don't have to put too many of them away tonight and uh, we'll see how today pans out well it may have been because it was a particularly hot day but i didn't didn't sell one box although they were only out there for six hours and i wasn't going to put them back out the next day so they're stacked at the back of my shop and i'm going to wash them up repair them I'll probably sacrifice a few for uh, some of the boards and I'll be pricing them at $20 each. So I'll check back in it right at the end of this video and let you know how they've been going. But uh, with the work involved for those, uh, I'm happy just to pay 50 the lot and uh, I'll get some reward for my labor. Now, I've washed up everything else, so let's go along them all and we'll make some notes. Now, excuse the wind, it's a bit windy out here today and I wanted to get this video done, so we'll go for it. All right, let's start in the corner. Now, these are really early plates, but nearly every one of them is damaged. In fact, I think they all are. That's got a big, ugly chip on it. But lovely early blue and white plate. Nice English mark on the back. This one is very early 1900s, could be even late Victorian. There's a chip on the side there. Another English mark. This one's probably even older. I would say that's Victorian, Meakin, very stained, lots of chips. Now there's two or three of these ones and they've all got big flaky chips on the side. So it's probably why they ended up in this box and the lady was going to throw them out. Uh, that one, yes, has a chip at the front and this one's badly stained, not much of a pattern anyway. But look, to me they're not rubbish. Uh, I've sold old china and broken china before to people that do mosaics and they love it But you know what some people look past the fact that it's chipped and let's be honest as we all get older we get nicks and chips and We start to deteriorate and my hips can vouch for that and my knees But that would still look nice on a plate rack You could touch up the chip with a texture if you wanted to hide it a little bit and it is a nice genuine antique plate so there's a bit of value in these. I've got a couple of options. I could sell a lot in one go. I could put $10 on them for a selection of antique plates and uh, obviously damaged, but I'd, I'd declare that. I could try and sell them each. I could maybe even be ambitious, $5 each. I'm not going to go to that extent. I'm just going to put $10 on a lot and there's a fair chance that someone who does mosaics will absolutely love them. So let's go through the rest of the stuff. This uh, is a lemon squeezer or juicer and it's a nice blue and white willow pattern. It's an older style but I suspect it's a more modern reproduction. It's way too clean and if we look under the base there's actually no marks. 
So I think it's a reproduction, but it really doesn't make much difference. It's not damaged and it's functional and someone that collects blue and white would love it, particularly the willow pattern. But I'm gonna put 15 on that, shouldn't be a problem there. Moving along, oh, these are a couple of English sauces. I didn't have a cup with them and I think the bottom one was cracked. So let's just put those in the $10 lot. They'll be great for mosaics. Now there's a couple of bowls here, great, really nice old children's bowls. This one unfortunately has got a chunk out of it and the other one's cracked. But uh, how cool are they? They're genuine vintage children's pieces. I'm going to put five on the pair, even damaged. I think we've got a good chance of getting that. The next one's a, a serving plate and they usually have a handle up the middle. Uh, this one's missing the handle as you can see, but it isn't damaged. There's no chips either. Sometimes I get spare handles, but we'll just sell that one at, oh, I reckon we'll get 10 on that. No, we'll go five. We'll make that five. We don't want it hanging around too long. Now, this one's a little sort of half-size or mini terrine. Uh, very stained. Got a crack through the bottom of it. And I think from memory, I think it's chipped or something as well. Maybe on the handle. No, it looks okay, actually. And the lid's all right. So it's an English one again. It's quite early, probably uh, early 1900s, maybe up 1920. Could even be in the 30s. I'm not sure of the pattern. Uh, I'm going to put, what do we put on that? We'll just put $5 on that. It is. I can feel that chip actually under there. So we'll just put $5 on that. This is a more modern retro-y plate. It's actually Westminster, Australia. Uh, probably 70s, I'd suggest. We'll just put three on that. It's undamaged. Now the gruesome man. Uh, I reckon we'll go 10 on him. I'm not sh exactly sure um, what his use is. Perhaps there was a little bowl to go in there. I don't think it's a tea light candle, otherwise you're going to singe his chin. But he's not damaged, and he's certainly going to suit some people's decor. So we'll put $10 on him. Uh, where are we up to now? The invalid feeding bowl. We'll go with this one. Now, these were, were designed to feed people who were obviously invalids or um, you know couldn't feed themselves in hospital and that was invalid not invalid uh, this one's in great condition it might be I don't think it's a hairline crack I think it's just a mark in the china but there's no marks on it anywhere but it's a genuine early one I think we'll go 15 on that this one's more modern it's just a pie dish probably from the 80s or 90s it's dishwasher safe so it can't be overly old um, and I think I saw microwave, did I? Yeah, microwave as well. So we'll go we'll go five dollars. People still use those. The silver plate candelabra isn't early, it's probably a 70s or 80s one. It's got green felt on the bottom. It is silver plate, but um, it's probably oh, it possibly could be English, but it doesn't make much difference. But we should be able to get 10 for that. I'm not going to polish it, someone else can do that. The large Victorian platter. Is actually undamaged other than being stained. Now I had another one of these in a deal recently. Uh, they're actually called a charger and essentially they're just a large food platter and they're from the late 1800s and it's the Asiatic pheasant design. Uh, I think we'll get $30 for that. The staining could well come out with a bit of a soak. You can soak them. I've had success soaking them in uh, with steridant tablets for what you'd use to clean false teeth. Uh, you have to be very careful trying to bleach them. It will take the stains out, but the bleach can get in under the glaze and can cause ongoing problems. So you have to be careful with that. Uh, I think the secret is to make sure they're well rinsed before you uh, leave them dry out. But yeah, I reckon that's a $30 piece. This large modern vase, it's just purely on its size. We're going to get $20 for that. It's undamaged, but it is a modern piece. Uh, this mirror, it's an extension mirror, it's not very old, but it's designed to mount on a wall and it pivots around, it extends out, it swivels just about every which way. Uh, it's undamaged, but it hasn't got any antique value, it wouldn't be that old. But uh, we'll put 10 on that. And what else have we got left? Uh, this clock, now I, had a, I put a battery in it, I did clean it up, and the movement has an issue, it wasn't running, or it'd start to run and keep stopping. So I'm going to take that home and just whack another quartz movement in it because I reckon I can get a bit for that. But for the sake of this video, we're not going to allow anything there because 
of the time and effort to put another movement in. I'm probably only going to get 10 or $15 for it anyway. Uh, in one of the boxes, this is a bit different from China, was a, um, a gasket set or a part gasket set for an Austin A40. So I'd say that would date to the 50s or so. A genuine gasket set or part thereof. I did have a look online and there's lots of sets available for these uh, and it really it probably doesn't really matter if you've got a genuine set or an aftermarket set if you're fixing up in Austin. I'm just going to put $10 on that. I think we'll get that. And the last thing, I think I've covered everything, the last things were these Kenwood Chef attachments. Now you've got a, some beaters, a whisk, a pea huller and bean slicer in the box. And this uh, blender jug actually suits the Kenwood Chef as well. So I'm going to look at eBaying those, so we'll add the price of those onto the end of this deal. I think they could get around $20 odd each, plus postage. So we'll see how we go with those. Anyway, I've listed everything we've just spoken about and the prices. And we'll get a total once we finish eBaying the Kenwood stuff. And whatever this line adds, this uh, column adds up to, I'm not including the boxes. We'll work out a figure from that to give the people as a bonus. And I'm sure they won't be expecting, they'll probably just think, even though I said it at the time, they'll probably just think I was saying it and they'll, they won't hear from me again. But we're going to work out a percentage, give them some money back. Um, and just shows that really all this was, even the, the chairs, that they were going to throw it all out. So I can see why some people would throw the china out being broken. But I'm just showing you here that nothing needs to go to the tip. There's a use for most things. There's good value and profit in most things. If you just kind of think outside the square. Anyway, I'll get back to you after I've eBayed these things. And we'll see how we go there. And we'll get a total then. So it's just the next day. And I've changed my mind on eBaying these Kenwood Chef items. Uh, mainly because I've just got too much on my plate at the moment. There's so many deals going on. And instead of chasing 20 to $25 each on eBay with the time to list them and then there's fees, of course, I'm just going to ask $10 each on them in the shop. And there's five items there, so we're going to add $50 to our list. And when you saw the list last two, I'd forgotten to write the Grisman, gruesome man in, so added $10 there. So let's get a total on that list of items that was going to landfill. And my retail price added up to just over $300. So it's going to take a little while to get that, but I think it's all priced relatively cheap as far as my shop goes, and I think it will sell fairly quickly. I actually already have sold the rocking chair, um, and, and the English china isn't even in the shop yet. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to touch the boxes. That I'll treat that as a separate little thing, and just before I finish this video, I will let you know how I've gone. I'll leave it a couple of weeks and see if I've sold any. But what I'm going to do on this 300 dollar value item items um, I'm going to give the people a hundred dollars cash back now they're going to be shocked because they thought it was rubbish um, I'm three times in my money I'm probably a little bit more generous there than I would be normally but I know I'm going to make quite a lot out of the boxes so that to me represents good business practice these people will advertise for me uh, I don't do any traditional advertising with my business. I just let word of mouth happen. And by doing deals like this, it really helps. All right, we'll check in just before we wind things up, maybe in a couple of weeks, see how we've gone with the boxes. Hey, did I say a couple of weeks? I really meant a couple of months, about three months. It's been a while. I have to get back and finish this deal. And I've finally found time today to get out in my backyard and wash up the last of these boxes. Now, I did sacrifice about three that weren't worth fixing and got some boards off to suit some of the ones that had damaged boards. There's about a dozen here. So that's all finished, got them ready to sell. I had also put, uh, I think there's four or five in the shop at the moment. I did give a couple to my daughter for a garden and I have sold about five. So what was that? That's five, five, that's 12. We've got 12 here, that's 24. I must have sacrificed about six or there's maybe another one in the shop that I can't remember where I put it. But I have sold about five at 20 bucks, so they're going to sell. And now that I've got these out of my yard, much more chance of selling them. So that finishes the deal. Um, 
pretty happy with all this. I'm really happy with the stuff we showed you in the notepad. I've sold nearly all of it um, in the last three months. I haven't been opened a lot. Where Victoria's in another lockdown with COVID at the moment. But um, most of the China's gone. There's only a few other bits and pieces left. So another really happy deal. Some happy people. They got their money. They were amazed. Um, I've done really well out of it. And nothing's gone to landfill. So there we go. Another successful story. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.